What is up YouTubers, YouTubettes? So, today I'm going to show you how to make lead tetraoxide from a battery and with a fire. <laughs> so, you, you cut your battery open, so... You see, first I opened this and I drained all the liquid into there. And then I cut this off with a sawzall. And so you see I cut right below these plates, which is ideal because so each one of these would be connected to each one of these lines and so if you don't cut them here then you have to break them all off individually which can be a pain in the ass and so pull these out and so not all will they won't always be in bags like this but so you open, pull a bag and then you can see like right there these little squares that's and that's the lead oxide four and so then inside these bags is the gray, which is the lead oxide 2. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the lead oxide 4 and I'm collecting it into here. And so once I have it all collected into here, I'll be back. Alright, so now you see, if you look at this handful, um, all these grids are aluminum, or not aluminum. The, all the grids are just straight lead, and so you want to pick those out as best as possible. And then you'll have the little pieces in the grids, which are like this little square, and that square will pop out, and that's your lead oxide, and that's the part that you want to separate out from the lead grid out of all of this. It, it's not crucial to get it any of it actually but it's just nice to separate it because it'll uh, mix up with your product in the end and so then it'll be harder to separate later but it's not a huge deal but it's just easier to do it now than then and so yeah once I'm at that point I'll be back all right so I've got the majority of the big pieces out and there's still a lot of little pieces in there but so now what I'm going to do is rinse them. And so now the whole purpose of rinsing this is to get the sulfuric acid off, not the little particles. Those little, all the dirt and shit that's in there, you want to keep. And so it's only to get the sulfuric acid out. And so basically I'm going to fill this bucket up about halfway with water, let it sit for an hour, and then decant the water off. And that remember that water is going to have lead in it, so you can't just dump it on the ground or whatever. you got to take proper care of it. And so, anyways, I'm going to rinse this off, and then I'm going to decant it, and when I'm at that point, I will be back. Alright, so it's all decanted now, and so now I'm going to take it out of here, and I got this kettle right here that I use, old um, cast iron one. So I'm going to put it in here like so, and then I'm going to put it into a fire, and so that way... And I'm not going to cover this part either, even if ash goes in there, it's no big deal. But just that way it can breathe with the lid closed. And so, when I get there, I'll be back. Here's the start of it being in my little kiln thingy. You can see I got coals down there. I'm going to start building a fire up on it and make it a little hotter. So it's been on here for about an hour now. <clears throat> and when I put it on, it was still dripping wet. And so... You can see in there, the color is kind of dark. It's got like a brownish red color to it. And so now what I'm going to do is stir it. And um, if you can, can't really see, um, yeah, like right there, those little shiny dots, those are all little dots of lead that's melting. And so, yeah, anyways, I'm going to stir it up and I'll be back. Alright, so you can see like right there how it's, those colors are changed. So now that's what I'm looking for. And so now the colors are going to start changing more and more. And the trick is to catch it before it goes from one color to the, the next. Because it can change through all of its stages of oxidation through heating like this. Um, typically for me I find that I do one heating and then cool it here and then... Uh, heat it again on another time and that is how I get the best results typically but I mean that's not something that's necessary to do that's just something that I find helps for me 
because I'm lazy and don't check it as often as I should. Alright, so after it's all cleaned and everything, I put it into here. And then, um, as you can see, you can watch the color in there and it changes red pretty good. Oh, shit, it's turning yellow. God, take it off. Um, so, it'll go to red and then to yellow. And so if you get to yellow where I'm going, you've gone too far. So, I'm gonna have to start another batch probably. But you can go all the way down to gray and then come back again. It's just a pain in the butt. And a long takes a long time. And so here's the end of my first batch. And, um... You can see it's orange, and this, so this is still technically considered minimum with this orange color or red lead. Um, it just hasn't converted over to being litharge, or which is lead oxide to, um, but yeah, so this is red lead or minimum, whatever. And so I have another batch out on there now, and we'll see how that one turns out. This is after about five minutes, smashing it up powder it because I sell this on eBay and um, I sell it up to 300 mesh and so it's pretty fine powder this is just an update to show you the color you can see that it's starting to turn red and pink and stuff and so it's coming along to the color I'm shooting for just gotta keep checking on it this is probably two hours in so my last run didn't turn out too good I got into another project I was working on and spaced it only for about maybe 20 minutes or so but it was just long enough for it to turn yellow so it didn't turn out good but anyways you still see how to do the rest of it and get it to be red or I mean orange like my shirt is or whatever and so um, and it can be red all different shades of red orange yellow uh, just depends on what you're trying to do um, but anyways, now you can see how to do it without using any chemicals, just the battery the, uh, oxides and some heat. Anyways guys, till the next one.